straight to my new log job I just started a couple days ago and it's on a quiet road and I was expecting a very quiet job except for the chainsaw and then yesterday we had some company come in right across the road from where I'm logging a big chipping crew started there big logging crew that does chips and uh, so they got started there and so now it's kind of interesting because on one side of the road it's the old-fashioned way of doing things a lot slower way of doing things and that would be me and then on the other side of the road it's a big chipping operation that I think there's two big huge skidders a huge chipper tractor trailer fulls of chips going in and out all day long it's quite a quite a difference between the way I log but uh, it's uh, it's just the way it is nowadays I'm, I'm the rarity no doubt but um, and that's one reason why I put these videos on because who knows maybe someday there'll be people that really want to learn how to do it the way I'm doing it and uh, by putting these videos out maybe it will help some people so anyways uh, I'm not saying anything bad about the chipping operation by any means there's just so many um, benefits of that operation also but I feel there's benefits of my operation also in this world so this was yesterday as the big equipment started rolling in It was also yesterday when I cut this big tree. Now I'm about ready to cut what I think is probably the biggest pine on this job. And uh, it is pretty big. This pine right here is right on the edge of a swamp and I think at times this is almost underwater here. But a lot of times the pine grows quite large in these swampy areas. That's a big tree. I do have some red rot in it, but still quite a tree. A bit of red rot right there in the center, but overall it's pretty nice. That red rot hopefully will clean up. Let's see what it measures. Three, 
foot three inches. Good size tree. What we got this way? Three foot one inch. So, anyways, I'm pleased with that. We'll limit up and get it out. I don't know if we'll get it out tonight. It's getting just about quitting time, but we'll get it limbed up and ready to go. So here we are back today, unloading the trailer. Seems like quite a contrast between their logging on one side of the road and my logging on this side of the road. So we're in here putting this putting this chain on this big log. It's only eight feet long because right. I'll probably end up taking it down to my place because it's probably too big for the Amish. And uh, I didn't want anything longer than eight foot for probably tabletops. That's what I'll saw it into. Yeah. But the log was such that I couldn't get a chain on it, so I had to put a rolling hitch and I'm hoping it's gonna roll enough to allow me to get the chain on. I might have been able to get a cradle hitch set up at this point, but I didn't. I guess I'm glad I didn't because you'll be able to see how much harder it pulls without the cradle hitch. Sometime I'm going to try to explain to you why I sometimes ride on the cart and sometimes I stay on the ground. There's a lot of rocks right here and I just hit that rock right there in the corner so I have to back up and swing over here and try to get around that rock. I'll just take it just a little ways and then I'll stop and actually unhitch and set myself over to hitch on again. Here I'm putting another rolling hitch on this log so I could turn it so that the notch is on the bottom side to act like a runner. But in the process of doing that, I also pulled the log right into that rock.
Okay, I want to show you um, what a cradle hitch is. Um, this log being so big, it would have, if I hitched the chain up where I normally would and pulled, it would actually drove the front end of the log into the ground because the log itself is higher than the hitch point on the cart. So what I've done, and I've actually got the notch where I cut for the tree to act as a runner, so I got that turned in just the perfect spot. When I came up through here, I don't know if you saw it, but my, my log actually hit a, a rock right here and actually drove, stopped it, and the back end actually went up in the air. So anyways, with this cradle hitch that I did, we have two chains on instead of one, and I have a hook here and a hook on the other side down low, and then I'm hitching to the outside of the cart. So hopefully when we pull, it'll actually lift the front end of the log up a little bit higher so it won't hit anything. So we'll see how that goes. This log pulled so much easier by doing that. Even going up this hill, it was doable and it would have been very difficult otherwise. Another thing the cradle hitch does is keeps the log center behind the cart. If it's just a single chain, the log tends to flop all over the place, especially on the big ones. Still had some little red rod in the center, but it scaled 300 feet. Oh, map it. Oh. 
Alle. Ha. 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 There's a big advantage to having my own sawmill. A lot of this pine is kind of on the what I call bully pine, but uh, it makes great Adirondack siding and we saw a lot of that for our different customers and the Amish sawmills also sell a lot of that. So the tree that I cut last night, this is all the wood right here, it ended up being 1400 board feet in one tree. So that was a great tree.